Good evening everybody and welcome to episode 2 of Up The Dale. Uh, this is our second video podcast from Up The Dale Cricket Club and thank you to everybody who watched the first one. We had over 100 views which for a little thing like we were doing is uh, is really good and we'll, we'll hope to build on that. We had some good feedback from people within cricket and outside just giving us a bit of hints and tips uh, as to how to progress things and, and hopefully episode 2 might be slightly better if, if not the same at least. Uh, joining me again is, is Dave Maguire. Give us a wave, Dave. Evening, Neil. Dave's our um, vice chairman and uh, plays in the second team with me. And special guest tonight is club, I'll use the word legend, legend in many different ways. Oh. Many different ways. Mr. Sam Bolton. Evening, Sam. How are we doing? All right. Not bad, pal, not bad. Uh, Sam has had a couple of different stints at the club, left to go and play at Gregson Lane and uh, for his sins last season came back to join us and, uh, <laughs> and would have been part of the first team army this year if things would have got going but we'll discuss that again in a bit. So as last week first of all we'll set off with some club news um, and first things first we're going to talk about something that has actually got a bit of traction uh, both locally and um, throughout social media and that's with no games going on, we started to do our own uh, virtual games. Initially using the old How's That Dice method, um, which we talked about in the last episode. Um, and then we have progressed that. But first of all, we're going to talk about uh, the first dice game. And we actually did the first game of the season, which would have been the first team travelling to Mossum Lane Blackpool. A happy hunting ground in the past for the first. And we took on Alex Divers Blackpool. Um, I think we discussed last week, Dave, um, as I say, some, some happy memories of that ground. And uh, between us, we'd actually discussed that we were quite hopeful of a, a Walterdale victory. Yeah, we'd spoken last week about the uh, the relative strength of the first team and sort of the uh, what we saw as the, um, the dangers posed by Blackpool. And as I'm sure we'll go on to discuss, quite a few of those were, um, were proved right, including some top performances by some players we'd, we'd picked out. Sam, I'm not sure whether you have any happy memories of, of playing Blackpool at all. Um, I think I played there a couple of times. I know we definitely got beat once. Um, but yeah, probably played there a couple of times over the past few years or whatever. Well, we, we set the game up and the first team... I'm just going to see if I can bring this up here. Uh, the first team that uh, we chose um, was a batting lineup of Mohamed Nazif, Alex Hines, Imran Hussain, Sam Bolton, Irfan Pathan, Gareth Wynn Stanley, Ryan Wells, Scott Newton, Harry Bates, Matt Easton, and Aaron Ayton. Um, basically, uh, Blackpool battered first, and Walton Lee Dale um, put up a, a, a good, it was a, it was a 40, 45 40 over game. Uh, we bowled um, Blackpool out in 12 overs for a total of 182. With uh, Ryan Wells getting two wickets, uh, Matt Easton getting three, Aaron Ayton getting three. Very uh, good figures from them two. And Harry Bates taking one. Um, Wantleydale Chase, uh, 47 from Mohamed Nazif, 37 from Ify Pathan. And then 24 from Gareth Wynn Stanley, 26 not out from Ryan. And a 32 from 16 balls from Captain Scott Newton. So all in all... It was a, a pretty comfortable performance from the first, um, albeit virtual. Any um, any performances that stood out for you in there, Sam, or surprised you a little bit? Yeah, Scott getting a few. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's all good fun, in it? It's been, uh, you got to keep yourself entertained. So these little virtual games have been all right. They've been uh, quite entertaining. I think Elliot said it, didn't he? Uh, I don't know who's more... Uh, more bizarre you for doing them Neil or us for uh, being, hanging off every delivery and every word it's it's been bizarre isn't it I think I think <laughs> it, goes, it goes to prove how much we're missing the game doesn't it let's be honest so um, it, it was great that yeah, Paul bought into it as well yeah it's true I mean like you know there's only so many times you can watch AB de Villiers masterclass or your Ashes <laughs> 2005 DVD before it gets a little bit samey so it's been great just to uh, watch something where you don't know the uh, the result and yeah everyone seems to have you know bought into it and been watching and you know from the comments that we've had throughout the club about it um and i know you you've you know heard similar things 
from outside the club as well, Neil. People seem to have really enjoyed it. So, you know, it's something that, um, that we can really look to sort of continue um, in the weeks weeks to come. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been something different, shall we say. Well, off the back of using that match on the Saturday, um, we actually ventured a little bit further and, uh, and found that there was a, 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 an Xbox game, Cricket 19, that we could customise completely and make your own teams on. So um, with my little background in gaming that I've got, I knew I could live stream uh, from my Xbox. So I actually looked into it. Um, we managed to get a hold of a copy of Cricket 19 and, and we made both Blackpool and Wantleydale teams in that. Did a couple of tests and then um, earlier this week we did a lot of test live stream replicating, albeit in a T20 this time, that Blackpool game again and, and Alex Diver again really threw himself into it, gave us the team and uh, and it worked really well and, and, and albeit that was a, it, it actually works better because it's a little bit more, and I use the term loosely, realistic, but in terms of scoring it's, it's certainly a little bit more realistic. So um, we've got highlights of that up on our YouTube channel, we'll, um, th this, this itself will be going up on our YouTube so go and check that those highlights out. Uh, that'll give you an idea as to how that's working and, and hopefully how that can progress moving forward and also give you an idea of where you can watch any of the live streams moving forward. But just to give you an idea how that panned out, um, again Blackpool battered first in this one and off 20 overs they made 155 for 6. Uh, ben Lloyd their wicketkeeper top scoring with 37 not out. Uh, wicket takers Harry Bates 3 for 25, Matt Easton 1 for 30. And there was two run outs as well. Um, and then Wantleydale in reply, it was a really tense game. I think it went down to, uh, it was the 19th, end of the 19th over. We knocked it off 158 for eight. Um, Naz and Heinze were strolling as the opening partnership. 36 for Heinze, 35 for Naz. And then we have the usual Dale collapse. Um, and then Harry Bates again, master with the ball, master Bates with the bat. Uh, sorry, couldn't, couldn't avoid getting that one in. Um, 27 not out from Harry, won the game for us. Uh, star bowler for Blackpool was uh, Samra with 4 for 30. So, all in all, it was um, a good experience. We had, a, knowing streamers as I do, we, I think we had a, an average of around about 15 viewers. I've got to say, that's the, it's, it doesn't sound huge numbers, but it's really not that bad. And I know a lot of the guys in our WhatsApp group, uh, as Dave mentioned previously, were we're hanging off every word and, and, and waiting to see what was coming in. So hopefully we can progress that. What The idea of what we're going to do is have, uh, we had the first team last Saturday. We're going to have the second team coming up this Saturday. Uh, the third week will be the third team who were due to play BAC Preston in their third week. And then we'll rotate it back round to the first. So, I mean, from you guys, anything that I know, as I say, it's, it's only virtual, but anything that you guys might want to see come from this in terms of, um, how the teams progress and uh, do, do you think the realism will come through? Do you think that people will get the runs that you would expect, Dave? Can you can you improve the umpiring? Because i got well, a run on <laughs> we, we, uh, good Thanks for touching on that, Sam, because we have even put our own umpires into the game for this weekend. So we've got the great Jim Wormsley and we've even brought back uh, one of our umpires from previous seasons, Dizzy Dave Roskell. So we've got our two, own two umpires, but uh, but yeah, it's a, I mean, I, I believe you've watched you watched it, Dave. What did you think to run it on cricket nineteen, and and what do you think it adds more than maybe doing the dice method that we did previously? I think it's just a bit more interactive, isn't it? You know, people can just sit and watch it on the laptop or the phone or whatever it is, and you you know, it feels just that bit more realistic. And and watching the game, it, you know, I was I was quite pleased to see uh, Harry Bates lead the team and get them over the line and you know quite a recovery for Harry from um, winning last year's Duck Award to <laughs> you know getting a match winning knock with the bat um, in the first game of the season albeit by virtual means um, but yeah it was really good it, you know it was, it was certainly a novelty and um, like I say better than just watching continuous repeats on the TV um, and from the comments that you got from the stream as well there was some Clearly, some interest around from other people watching. Yeah, Sam, any anything to add yourself? From you, I know you were watching quite relentlessly. I ended up starting like not really watching it. I had telly on it, it was on my phone, and then 
after about 10 overs, I thought, could we get in this? So <laughs> I, I started watching it a bit uh, closely. But no, it draws, draws bit, you in, doesn't it? It draws you in. It does. It's a bit of funny. It's good. you got to embrace it. It's a difficult time for everybody in it. So uh, any sort of, I mean, obviously we would be into second week of cricket, wouldn't we? Um, yeah. So any, any sort of cricket is, is or any sport, any, anything to take you from the strains of whatever what this situation is it's pretty good in it so I, I enjoyed it so it I know you were a little bit dejected at one point Sam weren't you where the uh, the overthrows came in and Mr Newton didn't make yeah. an effort to get up to the stumps did he no I had my perfect game I had a uh, bold lack of drain a few overthrows got about seven wick bat and uh, <laughs> paid me 12 pound and on I went <laughs> very, very, very realistic all things told Sam weren't That's it one, mate, and a rum decision as well <laughs> and a rum decision absolutely really bad LBW decision absolutely the only thing we haven't managed to do is wangle that that really bad box of yours into the game yet we'll, we'll have to see whether we can adapt <laughs> some some equipment a little bit more and uh, we'll, get, we'll get that in there um, but yeah, we'll, we'll touch on we'll touch on the further cricket nineteen matches coming up at the end, uh, where we touch on some match information. But just move on. I'm having a bit of a laugh there, but just moving on to something a little bit more important from our point of view as a club, um, in terms of supporting sponsors and sp sponsors supporting us at this time of year. Um, now, obviously, uh, we have uh, a few key sponsors. Our main sponsor is Stonehouse Homes, uh, estate agent, who are our main kit sponsor and club sponsor. Uh, we have Brigham Barrel, which were, uh, is a small micro pub, um, which uh, you can see on my top there, our main training kit sponsor. Um, Brigham Barrel was going to be our watering hole this year. Um, unfortunately, that's now been taken away from us for the, for the foreseeable future. And we've also got um, one of our main sponsors, Hosemaster. Um, so those guys have been really important to us. Um, and Dave's mentioned that which we're trying to support them in different ways and, and with different services that some of those guys are offering, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, as you've said, these guys are supporting us. So in, in these difficult times, we try to uh, do what we can and support them. For example, Brig and Barrel have been doing um, deliveries of, of beers and wines. Um, so I know uh, some club members have taken advantage of that and got some orders. And similarly, our friends at uh, Beer Brothers as well have, have done likewise. And, and, and again, members of the club have been, you know, to helping them out and, and getting deliveries from them. So, you know, as, as Sam said, it's difficult at least, you know, in the in this current climate and, and the pandemic that's ongoing. But, you know, where we can, we are trying to support our sponsors as well as they've supported us last season and, and hopefully in the future. One of the sponsors I'd like to mention, uh, I know we've we've looked at it internally, we tried to put it out on social media, um, is Linda's Precis Precision Engineering. Uh, one of our players, Andy Shorrock, works for those guys. Uh, they're one of our sleeve sponsors on the uh, playing shirt. And, um, and those guys have been uh, switching their uh, products up and have actually manufactured some um, face visors for, for NHS and key workers. And that was wonderful to see they put a really nice video out that we shared on social media uh, of the mm -hmm. hard work that those guys have been putting in at this time. And uh, we'd just like okay. to say a big thanks to, to Linders for their hard work and uh, and their efforts in, in doing that. So so well done, Linders. Um, Absolutely. We're just moving on now to something we touched on last week. Um, we'll just quite be quite brief on this, but it's, it's, it's also a little bit of a, a good news story. Um, the ground in general, we've seen a lot of pictures of different grounds throughout the country and the hard work that groundsmen are putting in. And while the weather has been great, um, a lot of the groundsmen have been making all the grounds around the country looking superb at this moment in time. And, and, and ours is no exception in that. Mick Berry has been putting a lot of hard work in going down, taking Milo the dog down. And uh, we've seen some pictures for over the last couple of weeks of the ground looking absolutely superb. And, and whilst we can't play, um, it's great, and I'm sure Sam, you'll 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 echo those. And and in in terms of your history at the club, you've been at the club longer than me and Dave have. Um, the ground probably doesn't has never looked as good as it is doing now. Actually, strangely enough. No, it's it's a shame, really, that Mick's obviously putting a lot of time and effort in. Ground looks a picture on it, but unfortunately, nobody's going to be able to play on it. But it's a situation where what do you do? Do you leave it 
and it might be a meta by June, July, or do you, you, you keep it up? And we've, we're fortunate we've got mixed time and efforts. That, you know, he, he's prepared to do it, and it's not a thankless task because everybody gets thanks for doing it. But it, it's it's something that takes a lot of commitment to do, and obviously mixed prepared to do it. It looks brilliant, but unfortunately, we don't know when we're going to be able to, to play on it, whether it be this season or not. It's, it's a shame, isn't it? It does. It really it yeah, breaks down the heart to see I was down there yesterday and it was, you know, it was looking an absolute picture. Um, and, you know, it, it, it certainly didn't look or feel like a, a first or second week of the season type wicket and an outfield. It was absolutely brilliant. And it's just such a shame, as as we've we've all said, and I'm sure everybody in local league cricket feels the same. It's just such a shame we can't get out there at the minute. But, you know, it, it's, it's in a great condition. It allows people in the local area to go and you know walk along the outfield and just use that that space to exercise and things like that as i said i was down there yesterday as part of my walk yesterday and it's just just nice to get out and you know enjoy that little bit of outdoors and just that that space really so yeah every credit to to mick and his team yeah i think you know as you said uh, for this time of year i think the weather has helped enormously and um, we've all been down at the wreck and at different grounds at this time of the season and and it's not been quite so warm and not quite so pleasant so it's uh well, well, it's, boot weather. well as i say i mean we, the, the start of the season for the last couple of years has been quite nice but you know at least we can have look out of our back gardens and actually see nice weather and and not see rain so uh, at least we can take solace from that so uh, so yeah but well done to mick berry i uh, hope he continues and he's uh, he's doing a sterling job so well done mick so now we're going to move on to uh, some general cricket news and, and some of this affects Wantley Dale and some of this generally affects um, every club out there. So we just want to touch on a couple of subjects, one of them being the All Stars and Dynamos um, projects by the ECB. Um, Wantley Dale has signed up for All Stars for three seasons now, Dave, I think maybe four. Um, and has pro progressed brilliantly for the last three seasons, going up in numbers every year. Um, and it actually was the precursor for us this year, starting a whole new junior section, looking at starting at under nines and under tens. Um, and that's one, something we wanted to progress forward into. Now, obviously, the ECB have cancelled both All Stars and the new Dynamos section, which follows on from All Stars from an age perspective. Um, and, and that's something that we wanted to touch on in terms of um, we think about maybe the older club members missing out. But in terms of... Um, this project being quite new and quite flourishing, it's a disappointment really now uh, for those youngsters to be missing out. And for us as a club, that's going to be um, something we'd set our sights on at this, uh, over the winter to try and progress. Uh, Dave, you've been involved with All Stars for the last couple of years, helping to run it. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's just, as you said, it's just it's such a shame. I mean, just thinking back to last year and we had all the, you know, the highs of, England winning the World Cup and I remember going down to the All-Stars following winning the World Cup and all these kids were talking about Joss Butler and Ben Stokes and it was just just incredible to see that you know all, all these 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 young kids had actually you know sort of engaged with the, the game and the sport and were really excited about practicing practicing it um, and it just feels just obviously there's there's nothing that can be done about it but it, it feels such a shame that these these boys and girls won't have the opportunity this summer to to build on that interest and that that you know sort of newly found love for the game and, and sort of take that forward and you just i just hope that they don't drift off into other sports or other pastimes or you know that that interest doesn't wane and that you know, cricket will still be be there for them when when we're through this this current situation. Um, but as you said, it's it's you know we've been really happy with the way it's gone so far down at Walkingdale, and I know that the numbers across Lancashire and the country have been have been really positive. So I just hope it's something that picks up and continues on that upward curve once we get back underway. Sam, you've got young children yourself, um, and you've been involved in the sport for a long time. What's, what's your thoughts on, on how maybe you, you've had a little bit of exposure to All-Stars, how All-Stars has been set up to try and introduce that younger age group to the game? Well, I mean, generally the rule would have been sort of 
under 11s to 17s, wasn't it? I mean, we all started at 17s, but now they're doing obviously a lot younger, which is from a serious point of view, which is not very me, but a serious point of view would be like, obviously you see me trying to get young children involved and the earlier the better. I, I, Dave's right. I mean, we, without 12 months of cricket, you don't, you don't know what, what's going to happen. You know, the ramifications can be like, who knows? You know, people are going to well, turn away from cricket or not. But I think that's where, for us, we, the power of social media and these podcasts, these virtual games, just try and keep any sort of interest up to try and keep people interested in the game because you, you're all stars, you, your dynamos or whatever they are, the youth, youth teams, youth teams, 11s to, to 17s, they're your lifeblood, aren't they? And if we don't have them, you don't have a, you don't have a, a future, do you? So it's yeah. important that we try and keep some sort of interest going. But unfortunately, every sport's in the same boat, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I know the ECB have been trying to get a lot of uh, interest in All-Stars in terms of sending uh, drills out to the youngsters because they have all had their equipment that they all get as part of signing up for All-Stars. So I know the ECB are trying drastically to keep some sort of activity going there. And, uh, you know, from, from our point of view, for... For those that don't know who might be watching the podcast and, and wonder, you know, what our junior situation is at Walneydale, it's it's always been an incredibly difficult. We touched on recruitment last week and how difficult it is for a senior recruitment for us. Um, but from a junior perspective, we face the same problems. We've got a lot of clubs locally that uh, are thriving at a junior level and have, um, to be fair to their, them clubs, that a really good basis already set up. So we do struggle. Um, and we, but we've got to say that All Stars has been a real um, catalyst for us to really look into build that junior section again. Um, so yeah, we, we we are feeling it as as every club will do. But you know, hopefully, as and when we start up again, we can we can use that basis to really kick on with the under nines, under tens, to really sort of be a, a, a recurring set of players to come through a junior section and really build that for the future. As Sam says. Those kids coming through that setup will ultimately be, provide the senior players for Walton Dale moving forward. Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? You know, they're they're the potential players at the club in ten, fifteen, hopefully twenty years time. So if we can, you know, keep them interested, keep them involved in in All Stars and Dynamos now, then you know you hope it pays off. You know, in in years to come. So as we've been discussing, a lot of things are making us feel a little bit down this this time, considering that we're not playing much cricket. Um, so I don't want to go on too much of a downer, but one of the serious things we did want to talk about, which affects a lot of clubs at the moment, is is literally the, the, the difficulties from a financial aspect and a, and, and a logistical aspect that a lot of clubs are suffering here. Um, so one of the things that, as the ECB have been sending out about financial support, but from our contacts with other clubs, certainly around the local area, Dave, we're seeing a lot of the bigger clubs potentially struggling financially off the back of this. And it's, it's going to be difficult for certain clubs to really come back strong in terms of facilities and, and, and the, the livelihood of the clubs really after this. Yeah, it's a difficult time for, for all clubs. I mean, you know, the, the vast, vast majority of local league cricket clubs will have very little money you know that that's the bottom line there's there, there are very few clubs which which are um have sort of you know a, a reserve of, of funds available to them um and most live you know a hand-to-mouth ex existence really you know the money that comes in is spent on keeping the club running and getting to the end of that season so a year where we potentially have little to no cricket um, means any development in facilities and equipment and things like that is simply just going to be be delayed, and it's and it's no different at Wanley Dale either. You know, we we spoke a few months ago as part of the management committee, and we spoke about things that we'd like to do and like to buy and invest in. And the simple truth is that if we don't get any money in in terms of annual subscriptions, match day subscriptions, sponsorship money, all those aims that we had are going to have to be put back until at least 2021 before we can even do anything so you know that there certainly are far 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 worse things going on at the moment but in terms of developing these amateur clubs um it's it's all going to have to go on ice a bit 
unfortunately. I mean, from, from our perspective of Albany Dale, we, we don't have many outgoings and we're, we're, we're not, um, we're not, we've never been an affluent club and, and I think Sam, you'll, you'll concur with that. We've never been a club that have overspent on things. And I think from that point of view, uh, we've discussed it as a committee. We might not be as bad off as some, some other clubs locally who have, uh, let's say, uh, bigger setups than we do. No, I think because we are, like Dave said, we're hand to mouth, aren't we? Um, and we always sort of have been. We don't have many overheads. But when you look at the balance sheets projected for this season, you, you did a high number of, of money that we're going to miss. But, unfor but fortunately, if you want to say this is fortunate time, it's not. Fortunately, we don't have to outlay anything on the other way. Yeah. So, but like Dave said, for us, if you want to invest and progress or buy a new piece of equipment, it ain't going to happen. And we don't know when it is going to, you know, it's not It's not anybody's fault, but we'd love to have a time and a date to say, right, you're going to start on this particular date and then we can work towards it. Yeah. But unfortunately, we can't project what is invisible, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's difficult. And like I say, I've been at Walladale forever and a day and we've always sort of struggled financially. And at this time, it, we're not struggling, but if you ask our treasurer Gareth, he'd probably be more concerned than 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 most of us. So yeah, yeah it's it's hard. It's it is hard. It's well, a shame as well because obviously we've had you know in the past five years we've we've de developed and invested the ground and we've got a new score box. We've bought new rollers. We've bought new mowers. We've got new covers. We've assisted with some drainage work so you know we tried to do, get involved in, in improving the facilities and the, and the equipment that we have and it just feels that you know that momentum is potentially just going to stall for these some possibly next 12 months i say if there was a target say they said i don't know august the 20th you can play six fixtures everybody be keen and you could do what you what you could to to get everybody pushing towards that day you know friendlies are not going to happen but you know nets whatever you could you could fundraise but at the moment we just can't do anything as a club to to even bring any sort of income in it's, it's apart from you know the 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 football card uh, the cricket cards as, as you would you know that's that's the only thing we can do winter nets were going great and they just got cut short just like that didn't they so yeah uh, it's, it's difficult and for a little club like ours it's it's not it's not worrying because i, I think we'll, we'll be all right but it, it is it, it's difficult isn't it well i think in, in a way you've both touched on things there that um tie in with what we've discussed previously you know i think sponsor money was something that we're seriously going to be short of uh during 2020 now um, because the season almost encourages more sponsors to be available um, but retaining those links, as we've talked about earlier, with people who have been loyal to us in the past uh, and, and just showing them a little bit of loyalty back in these hard times, I'm sure it'll go a long way um, over the next 12 months to, for those guys to carry on supporting us. And as Sam touched on there, we are trying to find little ways of creating a little bit of both interest and a little bit of money coming in within the club uh, with the cricket cards. And we, we, we're constantly talking about little ways that we can just do fun fundraisers that both have that fun element and also the potential to offer a little bit of income as well and you know we're never going to ask anybody to outlay big money at this time it's 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 not the thing to do but if we can create a bit of interest and create a little bit of money then i think little things like we've been doing with the cricket cards are, are key just to keep that going and uh, yeah we'll, we'll see how we go but i think yeah luckily we're we're not going to suffer too much so lastly we're just going to move on to some some match news we finished with some match news if if like Sam says, hopefully we get to the end of this, towards the end of the season, we do get to play some games and the podcast is still going at that point. And hopefully we'll be covering real matches at this point. But we're just going to touch on a couple of things here. First of all, the second match of the Cricket 19 that we're going to have a look at, and which is going to be uh, the second team. And the second week of uh, Palace Shield fixtures, the second team would have been travelling to Talton, um, a club that we've played a lot over the last couple of years um, with some success and some losses as well but uh, the second team um, played a cricket 19 fixture against our third team recently and unfortunately lost to the third team so that's 
not great preparation for the second team, but pretty par for the course, to be fair. Um, Dave, I'm sure you'll remember the last time we travelled to Tarleton last year. Um, I do a very that. unexpected result, but uh, yeah, give us your recollection of that in uh, a brief recollection. Um, I seem to remember we turned up with um, 10 players for the, for the start of the game. I think we had one of our players, Tom Gregson, was travelling from Blackpool yes. and managed to get stuck in traffic and we ended up fielding first. And I seem to remember that we bowled Tarleton out for, was it about, around 61? 63, I think. 63, and we had um, Aitzaz got, was it six for, six for 18, something like that, and he was just swinging it round corners for his entire spell. Um, you know, it, it, it looked really difficult to, uh, to face. Um, and then myself and Anis went out to um, sort of chase down the target. Um, and it was a, an Anis batting masterclass, really. He got 50 plus of those 64 to win. I got, I think it was a magnificent three not out, something like that. And uh, standard, standard, really, for me. Um, and Anis won the match with a magnificent straight six straight into the, um, the sight screens. Yeah, they just had those side screens installed that week, double double width side screens, and uh, they look pristine. And uh, yeah, I think Anis needed six to get his fifty. Um, yeah, I think and he they did. brought the spinner on just for one over, and Anis yeah. danced down the track. And I can remember putting my head in my hands, saying, "No, just don't throw it away now, Anis." Expecting him to yeah. just walk past it, and he just launched it straight back over the bowler's head, straight into the middle of the side screen, and put yeah. a nice hole in it. Yeah. So. It was it was something to watch from twenty two yards away. It was a batting masterclass compared to myself at the other end, who was batting by numbers. It was, yeah, it was it was something to see. Something Sam will be uh, quite familiar with is a, a first team slip up, um, and actually the first team had let I Aitz has dropped down to the seconds that week, Sam, and uh, Aitz has pre proceeded to get six for eighteen off fifteen overs, um, whilst I think the first team toiled. Um, and, and we were just rubbing our hands together that they'd allowed Aitzaz to come down. So um, I do recall Tarleton got revenge over us in our home fixture, the return fixture okay. last season. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's always a pretty even game against Tarleton, actually. They're, they're, we've got two very evenly matched teams, so I expect this to be no different. So uh, we'll see how that goes on Saturday, and uh, that'll be at 1.30 again, as per any normal Palace Shield start time. Um, and we'll put the link to that in the description below the video so you can tune in and, uh, and watch the live stream on Cricket 19 of uh, Walterdale Seconds versus Talton Seconds. Now, we're just going to finish with another game that we're going to do, which will be a bit of a, um, an invitational game and something that Sam has been discussing at length in the WhatsApp group. We're going to do a Legends game. We're going to do, uh, I think how we're going to do this is an older Walterdale Legends versus sort of newer Waltleydale legends in the form of, let's say, around our 2015 championship winning side. But Sam, you love reminiscing with the likes of Gareth and Naz about the good old days of the Chorley League. And uh, so what's your thoughts on the potential makeup of, of some of the guys who might get in that older legends team? Well, Nick Dawson's not playing in either. <laughs> no, I, I think we can leave Nick out of both of them. He, he 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 he's back just to uh, just playing the legends again. Uh, no idea. He's good in it. You've got to uh, reminisce on old times. It's what what club cricket, club sports about in it, you know. So some of these lads have. have I started in two thousand with Walterdale and Gareth and Naz. They become part of your life, don't they? And Guy Ass and what have you. So it's good to reminisce on some old games and old times and have you been beaten or won or. Had a good season, had a bad season. It's 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 all good. So yeah. Well, it was interesting listening to Naz. We 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 could come up with some names like the great Alan Rigby. Uh, he was one of the record batters, and and the current batting award is named after Alan at the club. Um, so I'm sure Alan would automatically walk into the older legends team. Uh, no longer with us, unfortunately. Uh, somebody who is very very much with us, and we see every week during the season normally is the great Gavin Turner, our president, um, one of the great all-time Chorley League bowlers. Gavin, let's say, knows how to speak about the game of cricket. Um, being there, done that, and can quite literally put everybody straight on it. 
Um, so absolutely, I think Gavin would be captain of that Legends team. And uh, but some of the other names that Naz and G have been mentioning, I've got to say. I don't know an awful lot about them. Um, Sam, whether you know any more, somebody like Dicky Latham, for example, I always hear gets mentioned. Dicky, Dicky was uh, Matt. Matt Latham was my generation. That was Dicky was his dad, so that would have been sort of early nineties, but but a bit before my time. But yeah, Dicky was uh, part of I think Naz and Gareth's era, if you would the, the great, great, great good old days. Excellent. Well, as I say, that we're going to put two just legends on, teams. Just on, on, on uh, Gavin, he, uh, I played in his last season. He, his last ever game was a cup final at Darwin. He couldn't run. Can't walk now, but he couldn't run then. And uh, I was batting, I was batting with him and what have you. And uh, we're playing Charlie St James, I think, or Whitley Woods, one or two. I don't, I can't remember. We're playing in a final, and he, he must have got about eight, a few nicks off, whatever. But yeah, that was his last of the season. I think he might have been captain or whatever. But he took a spe- spe- like a specky catch at uh, at slip. But yeah, he was he was good value, Gav. But he, he likes to blow his own trumpet, doesn't he? So he's got to be in. He's got to be captain. I, I I can only imagine Sam what it must have been like playing in a team with Gavin. It must have been a hell of an experience. Horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we're gonna have. You would have been about, I'd have been about sort of fourteen, I and mean, if you got out, you got it both barrels. <laughs> we, let's that. face it, we get it both barrels now in, in the pub after the games, yeah. anyway. So nothing's changed from that point of view. Um, yeah, we, we're going to have some discussions within our WhatsApp groups about the makeup of those two legends game. We'll advertise it on social media. We'll put the teams out, which I'm sure will create a lot of discussion, uh, both within the club and locally as well. Because obviously, if you think about it, a lot of the legends would have played. Um, maybe at other clubs as well around the, the, the area when the Chorley League was, was certainly running. So hopefully that will create a lot of interest. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll do that again on Cricket 19. We'll create those characters in, in Cricket 19 form and uh, hopefully it will be a, an exciting game to watch. So, uh, so yeah. So, Dave, any, any final comments from yourself? stay safe and um yeah we'll, we'll see you all around again soon do worry so yeah. any any uh, any last comments from yourself i know you came on in place of first team captain scott newton tonight uh stepping into the breach uh, any any comments from yourself as a, a final goodbye no scott's uh scott stitched me up he, he's 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 on next week i believe isn't he scott we, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have him on any time yeah, no, he, he is on next week um no it's just just good to keep in contact with people in it, you know, the WhatsApp groups, social media. If we didn't have them, there would be no cricket club, would there? You know, if you wouldn't see each other, you wouldn't communicate with each other, you wouldn't be able to keep in contact. And that's the sort of stuff at this unfortunate, difficult time. Um, you know, we've all know or lost people through this this coronavirus and stuff. So I think it's just good to keep people, you know, informed or keep people, you know, interactive with each other it's, it's the very least we can do and it, it's a shame that we have to do it this way and we shouldn't be preparing for a game saturday or whatever talking about probably me getting a lack of runs or having a look at my box or whatever but uh yeah we just got to keep things ticking over for as long as it, it's going to be it's, it's hard isn't it well thanks for coming on sam appreciate it and, uh, and in future we're going to have other special guests as sam says hopefully get scott on and talk about other first team matters um, but again, thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching Up the Dale, and we'll see you again soon. See you soon.